When we tithe, we honoring the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's honor to him. Because when you come and you drop off your hard-earned money, your sweat, your tears, putting up with that boss, those co-workers, you know who I'm talking about. People work on your last nerves. But you go there every day to provide for your household. But to take out of that your hard-earned money and to put it in the house of the Lord, that's honoring the Lord. You telling God, God, you mean more to me than this money. And I'm going to go through all this at this job to make sure that I got something to bring before you because you mean that much to me. You're special. You're of high esteem. I give you the glory. You're not light to me. I make you heavy because I don't tie to nobody else. I'm not giving it like that to nothing else. You mean the world to me because you done gave it all for me. We're going to do a little pre-word, amen, and... Uh, just want to just want to tell you all about some things that's going on this week. Amen. Um, tomorrow um, is going to be a solar eclipse. Amen. And uh, me and Minister Phil was talking about it. Amen. And, and so just want to bring you up to speed with what's going on and and give you. Amen. My understanding of the scriptures. Amen. Um, not to be outlandish or overreaching. Amen. But the Bible tells us clearly uh, in the scriptures, amen, that in creation, when God created everything, the Bible says, then God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from night. And so he's given us the purpose of what we see in the sky. First purpose for the sun, the moon, and the stars is to separate the day from the night. It is to show us what's daytime and what is nighttime. So you can go to bed at night. Uh -huh. But secondly, it says, let them be for signs. For signs. For signs. That's the second reason why the celestial lights are there. They're there for signs. And when you look up that Hebrew word here for signs, all right, uh, that word uh, for signs uh, is an old Elizabethan word that signifies an omen, all right? Uh, that word for signs, as I go back to my Bible app, it, it means a, a beacon, a mark. It means evidence. It means a, a warning. It means a, a signal, right? And to be honest with you, celestial events have always meant something in our Bible, always, right? From the very birth of Christ, the wise men followed a celestial event. They followed his star. God proclaimed to earth that something special was going on by the signs in the heavens. He used the lights not only to separate day and night, but for a sign, a signal, an omen of some sort. Now, we can even turn to the New Testament where Yahshua himself was on the cross, dying for our sins. And the Bible says in the daytime, in the daytime, when he was giving up the ghost, Israel, when he was saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabatana, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he was saying, hallelujah, it is finished and giving up the ghost, the Bible says there was a great earthquake and the day in the middle of the day became night yes. and some hallelujah that watched the celestial skies believed that even at that moment of the cross was a solar eclipse 
Are you hearing me? Yeah. The day became night. The sun stopped shining for a moment while our Lord was dying for our sins. Pastor, what you're saying, the end of the world tomorrow? No. Jesus coming back tomorrow? No, I'm not saying that. He could, but I'm not saying that. Why can't I say that? Because no man knows the day nor the hour of the Son of Man's return. So I'm no cult leader, no date setter. But what I can tell you is what the Bible says about what's in the sky. What I can tell you that the book of Revelation is always talking about and behold a wonder in the heavens. A woman clothed with this, a, a dragon, a this and a that. Hallelujah. Point our eyes towards the heavens. Because the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible talks about hallelujah, how, hallelujah, the earth and the firmament shows his handiwork. They not only show their handiwork, but the psalmist says that night after night, they utter speech. Day after day, they give knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that Yahshua would say when the days were getting short, he would say, look up. <laughs> look up. <laughs> For your redemption draw it nigh. Listen to me. There are many talking about this solar eclipse on tomorrow. That is going to be a, a threshold for some big things yet again. There is evidence to show that on one of these solar eclipses, World War I was starting during that time. We don't know what's going to happen. I can give you the possibilities. They've been talking everything from another war, even on American soil. They've been talking about another pandemic. They've even been talking about some economic changes. You say, Pastor, what is going to be? I don't know. Nobody knows. But the key is, amen, to be ready. <laughs> so if you're in this place and you're not saved, whoo, <laughs> that sign in heaven you're going to hear about or see tomorrow is a warning that you need to get saved, that you need to be saved, that you that you need to come to this altar at the end of this service because you don't know what's going to happen when he put that sign in the sky. You don't, you don't know. All right? So be saved. If you're a believer and you've been on the fence, get right. <laughs> get right before you get left. Mm. <laughs> left behind, that is. So get right. Get right, catch, catch fire again. If the devil asking you to play this week, tell the devil, not this week, devil. <laughs> the heavens are talking, not this week, devil. And next week, do the same thing because you see, I don't know, that it's just a sign. It don't mean that the event's gonna happen tomorrow. It could be this year, it could be 25, but, but it's, it's just a, it's a sign. And those signs used to get our attention when we would see it just, hallelujah, back before technology and we think we know it all. When, when it would get dark during the daytime, it used to set the old folk to praying. We ain't praying no more when we see stuff like that. We can discern the face of the sky, but we can't discern the signs of the time. 
So be weary. Be watchful. Make sure you're under the blood. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're in your word. Make sure you're on fire. <laughs> Make sure you stay away from the sins that would hold you bound because we're going to need to be on it. We're going to need to be on it. And go ahead and, and be at ease in this, that if you are in Christ and you are God's people, that whatever happens is going to all work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Listen, I foresee a situation where we end up on top. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's what I foresee. I foresee a situation where we end up on top, where the wealth of the wicked gonna finally be hallelujah given to the righteous. We end up on top. Just make sure you're on the right side of this. Just make sure you're on the right side of this. And so just wanted to tell you a little bit about that. All right? And I'm no date setter. I'm no, because I, I, I believe that's cultish. And if God never showed me exactly what was going to happen, then I'm not, I'm not coming here to tell you, all right? Because I don't want to be no false prophet, Amen. all right? All right? But I, I will bring you the scripture and show you what these things are for, all right? There's some claiming earthquakes may happen. And this week we had an earthquake in the strangest of place. I was like, oh, all right, Lord, I'm going to tell the church, all right. <laughs> okay, Lord. Earthquake up and down in the East Coast, New York. I said, all right. But we're going to at least tell them. We're going to at least tell them. So we just watch it with your 3D glasses. Like, like, watch it like it's an omen. It's a sign. And guess what? America needs a sign right now. America, America needs an omen right now. America needs judgment right now. Y'all don't want, that, that's what she needs right now. That's what she needs. It's too much wickedness going on, too much sin going on, too much, too much is going on. The land is crying out again. The earth is crying out again. It's, it's time. It's time. It's time. And so it could be an omen for that. So be filled. Be on fire. Be watchful. Be saved. <laughs> be right during these next few weeks and months as we watch what the Most High is about to do. Come on, give him glory in this place. But you end up on top. You end up on top in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A um, couple, of, couple, of, um, couple of other news that, that we have as well. Um, keep Minister Ann in prayer, amen. Um, he lost his father last night, amen. And uh, me and little O were there. Um, we had come in, amen, from the airport, and we 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 were communicating, and God just just led us to to come straight in and go by uh, uh, Anthony Reynolds Senior. And uh, while we were there, he slipped into eternity, amen. And uh, there couldn't have been a sweeter man. Amen. Amen. A sweeter spirit. Amen. And uh, when he slipped away, amen, me and Minister Ant, as uh, elders of the church, we, we led him, amen, to his Savior that night. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He let go of our hands and grabbed the hands, the nail scar hands that died for him and rose from the grave. And his eyes, his eyes are right now beholding the king. Anybody hear me up in here? Hallelujah. So y'all keep ministering in prayer, amen. Um, also want to lift up Miss Sarah, who lost her father as well um, this week. Um, her and Brother John, y'all keep the stewards in prayer, amen. And anybody else that might be going through, it's a lot going on, amen. So stay filled, stay on fire. Amen. And God's going to get us through this. Hallelujah. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. For to be absent from the body 
is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And so uh, let's go to our scriptures and then we're going to pray and then we're going to get cranked up. Hallelujah. Remember, we've been talking about a subject and uh, I'm not going to let go until the Holy Ghost tell me to let go. Amen. I feel a letting go coming, but we we're going to stay until he tell us otherwise. And so we're looking at Proverbs uh, 22 and 7 this morning. Um, it says, uh, go to 22, 7 if you can. It says, the rich rule it over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. It says, honor the Lord, and, and, and 3, 9, we're going we're gonna to cover 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. I believe he's preparing us for a new season, a new season. That's why this word is coming forth. He's preparing us for a flip and a new season. Amen. All right. Look at 1917. We may get to it. We may not. Um, he that had pity upon the poor lend it unto the Lord. And that which he has given, will God pay him again? Uh, remember that every point will be a sermon on its own so that we can stay hermeneutically sound. But uh, we're going to go into this. Most High, we thank you for your word. We pray you bless us as we go through your scriptures. Fill this place with your presence, your power, your anointing, your revelation. And we thank you for it even now. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give y'all some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High. This week, man, I was uh, on my bed and just uh, the dream life has been real vivid. Amen. And, uh, and so, so one of my dreams, man, it's weird. I, I, I watch this guy play basketball on, on, uh, on TV all the time. One of the stars for the Boston Celtics. And in my dream, me and him was talking. All right. We was, we were just talking, and I, I was, I was starstruck for a moment. I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying?" One of these athletes, and so, uh, but in the dream, he didn't want to, he didn't want to talk about basketball. He didn't want to talk about like me getting his autograph or nothing like that. He come up to me and he told me, he said, "Pastor Omar, what do I need to do with my money?" Amen. Amen. That's what he asked me. He said, what do I need to do with my money? I'm making this, but I don't have no idea what to do with it, where to start with it, how to build with it, how to make something that's going to last me a lifetime. You know how many uh, 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 professional athletes get that money and be broke when it's yes, done? Yes, yes. And the dream shook me. It shook me. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter how much money God gives you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you can get a billion dollars tomorrow. But if you don't have the mindset, if you don't understand the principles, the biblical principles on how to operate with the monetary blessings of God, you will not have money long. All right? These principles will not only bless you on how to manage, but also how to accumulate. So I'm sitting there with Jason Tatum, TP. That's the one. Yeah, I'm sitting down and talking with him. And when I woke up, I said, Lord, it's a vision. <laughs> so I sat down, hallelujah, opened my notebook and put together him a portfolio plan for his money. Because I will await the day. We got, I got him a real estate package, an annuity package. We're going to get him right. And the goal is when you retire, for you to have accumulated and invested so much into the kingdom and also into, hallelujah, real estate, annuities, to where you leave the NBA, but the NBA salary never leaves you. <laughs> And that's the kind of thing you could do when you understand currency. When you understand currency. And so that's what we've been doing. 
We've been talking about biblical principles. How, how would God tell us everything about life and godliness and not put anything on how to manage our finances? He has. We just don't want to talk about it. Well, we're going to talk about it. And whoever want to be blessed going to stay and get it. And who, those that want to stay broke going to leave. And it's all right. He said, a poor you're going to have with you always. But he never said it was you or me. It's going to be the ones that refuse to get the knowledge. And that's all it is, is knowledge. Our people, they perish for a lack of knowledge in every area, especially finances. And so we've been talking about financial wisdom from the book of Proverbs. And I'm going to start the recap there. And so we talked about that money is important. Because for our people, God bless the truth, we either on this side or the other. We either love it too much where it gets in the way of God and no man can serve two masters. We either get rich or die trying and forget about God. Or we don't value it at all. And I, 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 I propose to you today that both are wrong. Yes. But there is a safe middle ground yes. where it's not the most important thing. No, no, Jesus is the center of it all. Yes. All right? But just because something is not the most important does not mean it, it, that it's not important. And so we got people on this side where you've got it too important. You just... you. <laughs> You're going to do anything for it. No, that's an idol. That's covetousness. That's greed. And then we got those on the other side who, who look at money as if it's evil. They say, yeah, pastor, because money is the root of all evil. Baby, study your Bible. <laughs> it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. But Gentiles have placed within the Hebrews subconsciousness an aversion towards money. We look at it, hallelujah, and we look at everybody that have it, and we judge them as greedy. We judge them as, 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 as sinful, as evil. Because we've been given a Hebrew Bible through European lenses. <laughs> we think that being close to God is having nothing. And that's never what the Hebrew Bible taught me. But if in your subconscious you feel that money is evil, and in your subconscious you feel that everybody who have it must have did something dirty to get it, if that's in your subconscious, then subconsciously every time it, you come to get money blessings, you're going to shrug it off. Yeah. You're going to do the wrong thing. Yeah. You're going to go right instead of left. You never get it because deep down inside you don't want it. I'm preaching now. I'm preaching now. You got to cure that. Money is amoral. Money is a tool. And it's an important tool. It's a tool that because we don't have it in our community, we lack certain things. And there was a time as a people... And it's part of us returning to who God made us, that we were some of the most wealthiest people on the whole earth. You understand what I'm talking about? Why? Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. If God is the one and true living God, he going to make sure that his people, that they shine in every area, not just in morals and in, 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 in fruit, but in excellence, in opulence and abundance. Because that's the way the kings of old used to roll. Yes. And we just got to get back to that. So we talked about money being important. Not the one, one, number one thing, but it's important. Secondly, we talked about work. We told the descendants of former slaves that the vacation is over. Laziness is not going to do anything for you, but make sure that you end up broke. Proverbs 10, 4 says, he become a poor that deal it with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. Diligent mean you wake up and get after it every single day. 
that dealing with a slack hand means you don't want to do nothing. Your hand lazy, it's loose. You go to pick up something, it's, all, it's a slack hand. You ain't got no strength in it. You give people a shake, you shake their hand, it's a floppy hand. It's, come on, baby. Put something in that, use some energy. We want to keep all our energy for what? We got to get to work, man. We got to get to work. And all labor, there's profit. And sometimes when you're going through an economic time that's tough, you need, just need to get out and do something. Amen. I remember when we first started the law firm back on Mall Street, and we didn't have no business. But I knew the scriptures. The scriptures say in all labor, there's profit. I never had no clients at a time. But you know what I did? I said, I'm going to still get out there and work. So I beat her to the office, look, making up stuff to do. Look, shuffling empty paper, look. Or go walk in Walmart, passing out some cars. Why? Because I knew that if I work, God would have to honor my work. Some of y'all ain't got no business and wondering, what can I do to get some in? Work. Find something to do. Sweep something. Mop something. Make something. Do something. Because work is the prerequisite to get money. You see? We done become too lazy. We done become too dependent on the government. We want our disability when we're not really disabled. We work for cash. We don't want nobody to take no pictures. You hear what I'm talking about? I, I'm not putting you on blast. I don't know your business. You're doing all that for that little check. When God got a six-figure business just sitting on the inside of you. All right? You settling for 20000 a year when you got a 200000 a year business on the inside of you. And that's the start. You know? You're settling for a piece of bread when God want to give you a whole loaf. All right? So we got to work. We got to avoid illegal money. My brother, get off them streets. Amen. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. Profit nothing. All the time you're going to spend in jail, baby, that money, <laughs> that's gone. You made it fast, but you lost it fast. Yes. Yes, sir. And after you lost it, you had to take a 10-year break. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So you made 100000 in a week, but then you took a 10-year break. My boy was the manager at McDonald's. Huh? He didn't make 100000 in a week because he was only making 40000 a year. But when you add up his 40000 working 10 years while you, like, you was locked up, you made 100000 and then you was locked up. In the same time, 40,000 40, times 10 years, he made 400,000. Right. Right. So he done made more money than you, and he's free. It's a bad business decision. It's a bad business decision. You lose too much time, avoid illegal money, avoid get rich quick schemes we talked about. And I told y'all about all of my endeavors. <laughs> Knives, coffee, insurance, legal insurance, vitamins, soap. My God, my God, what they gonna come up with next? All right? And so watch that. It's gonna be a promise for wealth, but you're gonna have to put up some upfront, uh, upfront costs. Like our Nigerian and our, our Russian brothers keep calling y'all phone and sending y'all emails. <laughs> Send me money up front. Please let nobody from Philly fall for that, please. Please, because you ain't getting your money back. I promise you. All right? It's going to be some type of product, and they're going to tell you, all you got to do is get people under you. And what that's called is a pyramid scheme. And they're going to come, we not a pyramid scheme, then why it look like that? What is it? Like, what is it? It's a triangle. A, tri a pyramid is a triangle. All right, y'all stop tripping. Y'all putting people under you. So, so avoid that. That's going to waste your time, and it can pull you from your calling. All right? 
And last time we talked about make sure you live a life of integrity. All right? Because riches profit not in the day of wrath. Make sure you're living right. Because all the money you have will never get you into glory. You understand what I'm talking about? All right? And not only that, Proverbs 21, 17, he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. If you have an unnatural affection or affinity towards pleasure, things that feel good, make you laugh, have a good time, make you happy, and you have such a strong affinity to that to where you can't tell yourself what? No. If you can't tell yourself no, huh? you're going to be broke. You're going to be broke. Look what it says. It's not me. It's the scripture. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Yeah. And the women are like, oh, good, good. That, that ain't me. That's, no, no. One man, too. <laughs> when he say man, he mean all kind of man. One man, man. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He that loveth pleasure shall be poor. He that loveth wine, alcohol, shall be poor. Oil, luxury, shall be poor. Laziness shall be poor. Love women and men. Love, sexual morality shall be poor. All right? In this life, we call to modesty. We call to self-control. Amen? Amen? And you got to know your limits. You got to know that some people can do things that you can't. <laughs> they can go there, but you can't. All right? Learn that you have an individualized, tailor-made walk with the Most High. That T.P. can do some things that Carl can't do. That Carl can do some things that Pastor can't do. That's what the walk is all about. Because we all got different weaknesses. Don't answer me out loud, but what's your weakness? What's your kryptonite? What is it that you have to stay away from? That if it grab you, it don't let you go as easy. Is it the alcohol? Is it the drug? Is it the ladies? The muscle men? The women and the men? The little boys? The little girls? Is it your anger, your temper? What is it you got to stay away from? That's going to pull you right out of the place of blessing. Yeah. Know yourself and stay away from them places. Come on, give y'all some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to drop a little bit more, amen, for you out of the book of Proverbs. We're going to talk about two or three of them. One is going to be, well, two of them going to be kind of like a repeat, but I think it's important. So we're going to repeat it, amen. Uh, just because you hear something once don't mean that you're done with it. Hallelujah. And sometimes you got to hear it twice because the Most High is saying, I had pastor come tell y'all that, but here y'all are doing the same thing. So, I'm back. And we're going to talk about, hallelujah, uh, uh, number six, the sixth principle in Proverbs that God tell us, avoid debt. Avoid debt. Avoid debt. Pastor, what, what's debt? I got to talk to y'all like y'all like hood. <laughs> Avoid borrowing money. Loans. Stay away from that. Stay away from that. And there's certain things because of inflation that we have to use loans to get. Houses and cars and stuff like that. But that other stuff, you got you to gotta make sure that you stay away from it. And if you don't, you got to pay it back as fast as you can. All right? All right? Where you getting that from, Pastor? Proverbs 22, 7. It says, the rich rule it over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. We got to avoid debt. Remember, God never wanted his original people to be in debt. We were never supposed to be borrowers. You see how y'all like think that being with God is poor? Being, being the people of God is poor? That was never God's vision for us. Amen. Look his vision for us in Deuteronomy. Come on, help me renew your mind. He says, for the Lord thy God blessed thee 
as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. In order to lend, I mean you got to have. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay to have something. Look at your other neighbor and say, money not evil. Look at the one behind you and say, let me borrow something. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Just wanted to make sure y'all was up. I'm telling y'all, boy. Hallelujah. All right, all right. And so you see how he said about his people that they would lend. That means that they have. You can't lend nothing you don't have. And you can't lend something that you need. That's our promise. That's our promise to us. He said you would lend, hallelujah, to nations. Huh? And not, listen, to nations. Yes, yes. We talking about just lending to, to people. He hit 20. He said, huh. God told his people, Frankie, Frankie, they, Russia going to call you up, Frank. I need a loan. Cayman Islands is going to call TP up. Look, we need a loan. China going to call Montgomery up. Montgomery, we need a loan. He said, you wouldn't just have a little bit. You'd be able to lend to nations. Not just one, but nations. How can one nation lend to nations? That's a wealthy nation. Are you seeing the picture? And right now, somebody else wearing our clothes. Uh, yes. Yes. Esau wearing Jacob clothes, walking in the blessing that's for us. So when you ask how it looked, look what Esau doing. Lending to nations. But let's get back to it. It says that, hallelujah, the, he, he, God says, thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. We would always have enough. Thank you, thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations. And I'm here to tell you that, hallelujah, lending and reigning go hand in hand. Just like borrowing and serving goes hand in hand. You can't borrow without being a servant. And you can't lend without reigning. Anybody hear me up in here? Ooh, Lord have mercy. Our destiny was always to lend. Yes. Our destiny was always to reign. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Thank you, God. Whoever borrows serves and whoever lends reigns. That's why Esau is running the world. Yes. Esau has taken our principles, our scripture... They didn't brainwash us to say money evil while they got all the money. Yeah. Isn't that wise? Isn't that smart? Yeah. When you want all of something and they got other people in the room and you convince other people that they don't want it, that's brilliant. You educate all the people of the world never to want it. You educate all the people in the world, hallelujah, to be employees instead of employers. To get paid instead of to pay people. You educate them to fix their credit, to get ready to borrow instead of get ready to lend. <laughs> Woo! Woo! My God. They done played us. But they wearing our clothes. And so they lending to all the nations. That's why we can go current events for a second. That's why America right now is talking out of two sides of their mouth. Talking both ways. Acting like they care about Gaza. Oh, we care about y'all. We sending ships. We sending aid. Talking tough. So say. 
to Benjamin Netanyahu. Stop all of that. Pastor, why you say they're talking out, out both sides of their mind? Because while they're saying stop that, brothers, they got bombs that they're shipping off at the same time to Israel. Don't tell me to stop shooting people if with the other hand that's not on your phone, you're giving me bullets. You don't think we see that? Boy, you're a pawn, boy. Your whole country is bought and paid for. This scripture in Proverbs 22 is America. It's America. You say, why? America owe too much money to tell Israel what to do. What you saying, Pastor? The rich rule it over the poor. And the borrower is what? Servant to the lender. How America going to tell them what to do? When they own all the international banks and the Federal Reserve, and we borrowing from them. You will get a car from them people. How much is your car? Come on, tell me how much is your car worth. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody, because I know y'all got some nice cars up in here. Anybody car worth 20000 Come on, mother law I'm looking at you. Anybody? John, come on. Anybody got a 30000 A 40000 50000 Anybody got a 60000 All right. Wait a minute. I see the front row, right? Okay, okay, okay. So watch this. What if them people call you up one day? And they say, bring that car here. We're not going to take it, but, but you bring it here. And if you don't bring it here, we're going to cancel your loan. And we're going to repossess. Baby, I guarantee you bringing that car over there again. You're not going to bring it there. You're going to vacuum it, clean it, make sure you know them people are taking care of it. on the tire, look. Vaseline the tire, look, Kip, look. Oh, yeah, look, it's right here. It's good. Everything is good with it. What did you need? That's for a $30,000, $40,000 loan. America owe Esau trillions of dollars. Trillions. 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 They fell on that loan, they could take all the land and all the gold, if they got any gold left. Pastor, what you're telling us? They can't tell Israel what to do. <laughs> that's why they never stopped bombing yet. I know that's against your CNN news, but you know. I don't care. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to tell you the truth. They owe too much money. They owe too much money. That's what the old presidents always tried to avoid. America being sucked in by the bankers. When you go back to Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson will say, I, listen, we're not borrowing no money from these international lenders. Esau, by other, by other words. They tried to assassinate him. The gun jam, he beat the assassin up. All right? And go research what his motto was before he died. He said, I killed the bank. I stop America from falling into the hands of the bank. Come on, pay attention now. Pay attention. But he didn't kill the bank. Because after he died, the bank came back. Woodrow Wilson sold America out. That's right. The creature of Jekyll Island, they went on there, created the Federal Reserve that you think is a government agency, but it's a private company. They call it the Federal Reserve just to trick you. It's a privately owned bank that lent America money and is controlled by Esau. America can't tell nobody what to do, man. America it, it is, is not a king. America is a servant. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to give it to you real, man. 
Go look up every president that tried to pass another currency, whether it was Abraham Lincoln with his greenbacks or JFK with his executive order 11110. Just like Andrew Jackson, amen, they came for him. But Andrew Jackson survived. These other ones did not. Anytime a slave get out of place, the master gonna always remind the slave who they belong to. So back to you. Don't be like America. Take borrowing very serious. Anytime you have a situation where you could either save for it or borrow for it, I think in most cases it's better for you to save for it. All right? If you can't control swiping the credit card, then maybe you pass the credit card to your spouse who can. If he can't control too, then you pass the credit card to the scissors and you cut them thing up. Because God don't want you in debt. In those cases in the Bible where God told his people to borrow, like in the case of Elisha and the widow in 2 Kings 4, 7. He told the widow she was broke, she was busted. He said, what you have in your house? She said, I got a jar of oil. He said, man, go borrow jars from all your neighbors. And so she went. It was a scriptural time where God said, I don't like you borrowing, but under desperate situations, I don't mind you doing it. But after she borrowed and went, bring all those vessels into her house, and the oil kept pouring. It kept pouring. It kept pouring. She comes back to the prophet in 2 Kings, and she says, hallelujah, go. And she, she told the man of God what happened, and the man of God told her, go sell the oil and then go to Jamaica. <laughs> go sell the oil and go do your hat. Go sell the oil and buy you a car. Go sell the oil and move in River Ranch. That's not in the scriptures. She borrowed, but as soon as she made the money, the man of God said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt. Get them people off your back. Get them people off your back. Get them people off your back. Hebrew. With money, money go through cycles and seasons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Joseph's story taught us that. All of us, if we whether admit it or not, you're going to have years of plenty, and then you're going to have years of little. It's how you behave in the years of plenty that's going to determine how hard the years of lack is. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You see, she was in plenty. We get in plenty, hallelujah, and, and it's balling time. We up on Simcoe making it rain. Look, at the car window. Hold me, hold me. Now, we ain't paid none of our payday loans. We ain't paid none of, none, we ain't paid cons. We ain't paid the rent to rent a center furniture. All the loans we made when we was broke, we keep them and don't touch them because it's balling time. It's balling time. The problem with that is when we're done balling, the loans are still there. You see, when you're coming to your year of plenty, take care of the obligations you made in the year of lack. Balance your books. Pay what you owe. Because if you pay what you owe, the next time lack come, which it often does, you're going to be in better shape than if you didn't pay your obligations. See, the Bible tells us, hallelujah, that it's the wicked that borrow and pay not again. Look at Psalm 37. The wicked borrow and pay not again. You know? And that's everything. Yeah, yo. So when you borrow clothes from people and you don't bring it back? 
That's not a good thing. They're like, oh, I'm wearing it now, Pastor. Ah! And I'm not telling you something that I had to break out of that. As the last child, man, everything I got was hand me down. So I was used to borrowing and just look, hey, I got that, I'm going to take it. Uh-uh. That's not right. That's stealing. So when you borrow from somebody, make sure you have it on your heart as a saved, redeemed believer. Not to act like the way you used to act. Not to act like your parents used to act. Sometime right now, I'm just getting a vision of that, that Eminem money. Yeah, that Eminem money. You know when they would send you home with them boxes of Eminem from school? And y'all used to sell them Eminems, all them Dollar Care, them Hershey's. And when things got short, mama would come in, baby, listen. <laughs> you got two weeks to turn that in, but the light bill do right now. We got to do what we got to do. We got to rob Peter ha! to pay Paul. Hey! Won't you come around your act like you ain't been through that? I'm a child having stress about Bill. I'm like, Lord, I got to turn this money in on the 60. Woo! <laughs> you got to pay it with your borrower. Got to pay it. Man, when I got saved, I went back to the public library, man. Y'all know that? Yeah, the public library. When we were small, living in an old house, big city, remember that? Man, I had, a, I had an animal book we ain't never returned. Man. God. It was my favorite book, little old. It had cheetahs in it, like wildcats. I was like, oh, God, I'm never giving this up. And Ty had some books, too. We all had some books, six kids. So for the longest, man, through college and everything, I never went to the public library, John. I thought they had something out for me. I thought I was wanted, man. The first native of Gordon, now I come in there. Look. <laughs> it was a conviction that was on me. And when I got saved, I went back over there. I was like, look, I want to turn myself in. I mean, I mean my name is Omar T. Boy, you know? People are like, oh, we done wrote that off. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Pastor, what you saying? Listen, you got to pay what you owe. Got to pay what you owe, man. It's the way it goes, man. And so as soon as you get a debt, just have in your heart that Romans 13, 8. Look what it says. It says, oh, no man, anything. Oh, anybody, anything. They're going to get to the computer probably frozen. But oh, no man, anything. All right? But to what? But to love one another. That's all God wants you to do. That's, that's all he wants you to owe people is love. Is love, and that's how we're supposed to operate, all right? I understand for houses and cars, amen, because of, because of the, the high exorbitant cost of things, all right? I was talking to a uh, uh, minister and mama uh, last night. She was like, we bought this property by LCA. We bought this property for $500. I said, Ms. Reynolds, we couldn't, we couldn't build a mailbox for $500 right now. <laughs> Buying whole property. Yeah, and they, we were building houses, you know, for, for little or not, that's not that time no more. And so right now, hallelujah, you got you to gotta, you gotta get a loan. But as you get into financial savvy, you could, you, you could learn how to pay those loans out quicker. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. <laughs> by interrupting that interest rate, by sending some, some payments by monthly, and just have it on your mind. Be, be aggressive about it. The Bible say amen about loans and, and especially cosines, which we're going we to talk about in a second. We got to go back over it. But, but, but the Bible say when you're in a situation like that, you got to release yourself from debt. Like a bird that's let loose from the follower's trap, from a, from a bird hunter trap. You ever saw a bird? Well, we in Louisiana. You ever saw a chicken? that somebody got them and then that chicken, they let that chicken go? Does that chicken just like walk off like, like that chicken is, is flat legs and arms and blah, 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 blah. 
It's trying to get away. The Bible is saying when you put yourself in a long situation, you got to have the tenacity of an old Louisiana chicken. Because if you know that grandmother got her hands on you, I'm telling you she about to, it, oh God, it's over, to lay over. So you do everything you can to loose yourself from that situation. That's why Dave Ramsey, from that scripture, he got that gazelle on his business because it's just not like a chicken, it's like a deer, like a gazelle who was in a trap that was let loose. That is a trap. That is a trap, it's a trap to bind you, to make you a servant, to make you a slave. You was never meant to slave. You was meant to reign. <laughs> Hallelujah. Few little reminders, huh? Do we ever co-sign for anybody? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh-uh. No. It could be your best, best friend. First grade, second grade, and third grade. <laughs> Papa, we don't do that. <laughs> Why? Tell them it's against your religion. Because <laughs> your Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And look, you could turn to Proverbs. Don't co sign. No, we don't do it. We do not do it. What about if it's for your children? Mm -mm. Especially not some of your kids. <laughs> all right, so we don't co sign, all right? Do we do payday loans? No, stay away from that. That's, that's trash loan. That's trash. High interest rates meant to bind black people. Yes, sir. Meant to sap your weekly income out to where you always stay broke. Free yourself from that. I don't care if you got to sell stuff in your house to get away from that. Because you're wasting money. Do we rent to own? No, you're paying way too much for that second hand washing machine. Because somebody else had it before you. And they took it when they canceled on their contract. Washing clothes and somebody else washing. All right? All right, one more thing, okay? Avoid lending money to your brothers and sisters in church. Yeah, don't do that. We don't want no fights during the, during the offering, during, <laughs> during service. And when you lend people money, you're watching everything they do. We ran to give it an offer and owe me some money. <laughs> Get in a conflict with God. <laughs> you got to pay me first. <laughs> Avoid lending money to believe. The Bible actually say the precept is if your brother needs something, you, you give it to him. If you don't have it to give it, don't give it. A lot of times we lend to people money that we need. And they're going to say anything when they need money. I'm going to pay you back tomorrow, man. Why are you getting it today? Like, why, do, why don't we all just wait till tomorrow? <laughs> I had a brother tell me, man, I just need it. I got the money in my savings, but I'm just, I just need it from you. Man. Wait, 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 wait. So you got the money, but you want to spend... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so avoid lending to believers because you're going you're gonna to get an evil eye. You're going to get an evil eye. You're going to be watching their shoes they come with at church. You're going to look at your wife and say, that's some new socks they got on? That's... No, we don't lend to believers. How many people done lend to believers before? Come on, raise your hand if you done lend to believers. <laughs> If they in here, just, 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 just do like this. <laughs> just do like that with your head. Just, Misha shaking. Oh, God. Should have lent to a lot of Don't lend to believers. Don't lend to believers. Give it if you got it, but don't lend it. Now, as a believer, if somebody give you something, and they say, yeah, you know, it's yours, have the etiquette, if you get it back, to come back and to break them off. You see what I'm saying? Have the etiquette, have the etiquette, all right? So, so we avoid debt, we avoid debt, all right? Here's another one, here's another one that Proverbs talk about, we're gonna talk about it quickly. Proverbs talk about 
to have wealth, we not only have to do these other things, work and, and avoid get risk quick schemes and avoid criminal activity uh, 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 and, and, and you know, avoid debt, you know, we're going back over it. Proverbs says that we got a time. We got a time. We're going to go over We're going to go over Come on now. It's like a classroom setting. You know, the teacher will go over things more than once so that when the test come, you pass it. But what in God's situation is, it's not just a grade you're going to get. It's about whether you're going to get to the next level of blessing or not. So I'm here as a Bible teacher to make sure that when the tests come, you do what you're supposed to do with it. Jason Tatum was looking at me, what I do with it? What I do with it? He got a $30 million contract. He said, what I do with it? Apparently Zion don't know what to do with it. He just, <laughs> those that know, salty dog. Zion, I love you, man. But come on by Philadelphia, 200 West Willow Street, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70501. <laughs> and stop spending your money in the nightlife in New Orleans. Because that's not how to stay blessed, my brother. I wish he would put people that could speak truth to him around. And those that don't know what I'm talking about, just Google, how is I on handling his money? All right. Tired. Proverbs say tired. TP, you know what I'm talking about. Baby. All right? Tired. Proverbs, Solomon, the wisest man, the most richest man to ever live. He come through here and he say, this is what you need to accumulate wealth and get it God's way. The other thing he tells us, tired. Look at Proverbs 3, 9. We're going to cover it. I know it's a repeat. Look what he says. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of thine inheritance, uh, of, of all thine increase, all right? The Bible says, honor the Lord. This is special to me. Do you know that by giving a tithe, you are honoring the Lord? That's how you honor him. Pastor, what does it mean to honor the Lord? In the Hebrew here, it means to make him heavy, weighty in your life. Not something light. It's not somebody that don't mean anything to you. To honor the Lord means to make him great, to make him glorious, to give him high esteem, distinction, great respect, to show him that he is worthy and more worthy than anybody else around. That's what honor is. In the courtroom, amen, uh, when the judge walk in, hallelujah, to show him honor. We don't do that for nobody else. The bailiff walk in, they ain't do that to nobody else. But when the judge walk in, the bailiff say, all rise. <laughs> y'all been there, don't act like y'all ain't been in there. <laughs> and you don't get up and show honor and respect to the judge and see where that's gonna put you. They say, all rise, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, God saved the court, the United States. The honorable judge such and such. You may be seated. That's what honor is. You treat somebody different. When we tithe, we honoring the Lord. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's honor to him. Because when you come and you drop off your hard-earned money, your sweat, your tears, putting up with that boss, those co-workers, you know who I'm talking about. People work on your last nerves. But you go there every day to provide for your household. But to take out of that your hard-earned money and to put it in the house of the Lord, that's honoring the Lord. You telling God, God, you mean more to me than this money. And I'm going to go through all this at this job to make sure that I got something to bring before you because you mean that much to me. You're special. You're of high esteem. I give you the glory. You're not light to me. I make you heavy because I don't tie to nobody else. I'm not giving it like that to nothing else. You mean the world to me because you done gave it all for me. All right? And that's what he means. Solomon says, honor the Lord, Yahweh, with your substance. Because we got some people, I'm a tie. But I'm going to tithe my time. 
I'm a tithe, I'm a cook something for them. I'm a tithe, I'm going to give them some clothes. They'll do anything but write a check to the house of God. I'm telling you, they'll cook dinners, sell turkey wings. You know, tell us what they need. We need to do something in the parking lot. Okay, all right, we're going to have a garage sale. We're going to sell dinners. And my word is, stop all that, that running around for, for a little bit of chump change. Nothing. Come on, come on. By the time we finish, we're all going to be tired, and we ain't going to have made no money. <laughs> That's not the prescribed way to take care of the house of God. You don't honor him with those things. You honor him with your substance. That's what a tithe is. That's what a tithe is. That's what a tithe, that's what the scripture says. And I'm not ashamed to tell you no. I'm not, and I don't care what you think about it. Because it's the truth. I didn't invent it. He invented it. You know, Ralph Tresvant made a song. He left New Edition, he made a song. He made, he made, a, he made, a, he made a nice album. And he had that one song, uh, You Need a Man. Wait. Anybody know it? Said, don't you act like you ain't jam that Ralph Trevor. And the women had liked everything Ralph was saying. He said, you need a man with sensitivity? They said, yeah, Ralph, yeah, yeah. And he said, he said, not any man. He said, you need a man like, like me. They like, oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, Ralph, just like you. But then he had a part in that song that they didn't agree with. Ralph said, don't need a man that'll give you money. And they be jamming on that whole song, and then Ralph said, don't need a man. The, the, the women say, mm. <laughs> I don't know about that, Ralph. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> you see, because women know. Women know what you really love, you're going to provide for them. Don't come around here talking about you love me and you ain't breaking me. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> boy, you don't love me, boy. Listen. Show me you love me. All right? And some men feel the same way, but about different things. <laughs> Show me. Wait, if I got to put my glasses on. <laughs> Come around, y'all talking that love talk. <laughs> Don't just love me in word. <laughs> and so God is the same way. You come around, you're saying you love God. <laughs> saying you honor God. And God said, Don't honor me. He said, Honor me with your substance. Yes, Put something behind them words. Yes. Don't come around here playing all this, singing and all that, running around, centipede. <laughs> and when we check the rule, you don't just gave $100 the whole year. <laughs> but to Miller Light, Bud Light, all the lights, you get all the lights. <laughs> you're paying for every light there is. <laughs> Talking about you on a dime. You, you, every light. You pay for all of that. So God going to look at that and he's going to say, well, who you honoring? Who you honoring? He said, honor the Lord with thy substance. I love Malachi 1.6. He said, he said, that's the problem with, with Israel. He said, Malachi 1.6, he said, a son honors his father and a servant his master. God says, if I be a father, he said, where is my honor? Who honoring me? Just come around and call me your father. Where am I honor at? How am I different in your eyes to everybody else? He said, if I be a master, where is my fear? Where is my respect? That's what God said about, about honor. Don't talk it. Show me. 
don't need a man that's going to give you money. All right? In 1 Samuel 2.30, look what God says about honor. He says in 2.30, watch this, I'm going to just get to the bottom of it. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. God said, if you don't honor me, I'm not going to honor you. If you don't have the nerve to treat me like I'm different, then I'm not going to treat you like you different. Amen. Out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> Go back to 3.9. He says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. All that language, first fruits of thy increase, that's just the tithe. That's the first. That's the beginning. That's the choice part of your increase. That's your income. That's your gain. That's the 10%. By whatever you increase, take a tenth of that and give it to the Lord. Honor him with that. Don't give it to yourself. Don't go eat. Don't go to the restaurant with it. Don't give it to your wife. Don't give it to your husband. Don't give it to your children. Don't give it to your school. Don't give it to cable TV. Don't give it to Netflix or Hulu. Don't give it to drugs and don't give it to alcohol. Don't give it to the woman that you're playing with down the street. Don't give it to the man that only comes see you at night. He said, if you're going to honor anybody with it, honor the Lord with your substance. Are you feeling what I'm saying? Because I, like to me, he more important than, than everything. You know, we sung that song. We said, Lord, I love you more than everything. Then why are we eating our tithes? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why are we, why are we shorting him paying a half a tithe? <laughs> we paying a T, not a tithe, a T. <laughs> But look, all our nails done, look, everything. No, 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 no. So God's response when we honor him is this. So shall thy barns, in verse 10, be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst forth, or burst out with new wine. All right? You only have a barn when you have extra. God said, if you honor me with your substance, I'm going to do some things for you. Solomon is saying this. Solomon said, so shall thy barns. You only get a barn when you have extra. When you got possessions that's too big to put in your house, that's when you get your barn. God is saying that when you tithe, he will miraculously bless you with extra. What does extra mean? After you pay off everything and everyone you're going to have some left over. All right? Does anybody want extra in him? I know, boy, listen. That's such a beautiful word to me. I think this year, if any more children born, we should name them extra. <laughs> I'm telling you. And if y'all want to get deep, we're going to find the Hebrew word for extra. Huh? And we're going to just call them Gadul. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Something deep. But we're moving into an extra season, an abundant season. All right? You can only have a born when you have extra. Now, we don't have borns, but right now, a born would be, say, you got a regular account. God is saying, I'm going to give you a savings account. That's a born. I'm going to give you, hallelujah, a money market account. That's a born. I'm going to give you an annuity. That's a born. Because you got enough in your regular checking, you, now you can put it in overflow, all right? Different investments, that's a barn. Insurances, that's a barn. 401ks, that's a barn. Investing in cryptocurrency and, and precious metals, that's a barn. You could put some stuff away for emergencies. That's what he mean, a barn. And God is saying that you would not only have a barn, but he plural, he puts a plural on that, you would have barns. 
So that means you not only have a regular checking, but you got different instruments and avenues and vehicles that hold money and bear interest, huh? Because you got what? You got extra. Oh, God, I'm loving that word. I'm loving that word. I'm loving that word. He says, so shall thy barns be filled. Filled. He said, Pastor, how an account be filled? I got to teach you something about accounts. Every account has a limit on it, whether you know the limit or not. Hold on. Hold on, Tom. I'm almost done. When you learn about banking, you'll see a little gold piece in the window of every bank. It say FDIC. This bank is federally insured. And they tell you every account is insured up until most of the time is $250,000. Now, black folk don't understand all that FDIC stuff. You know, we don't know what that is. Well, to be honest with you, you should never put more than $250,000 in any account. Somebody need to hear this because you're going to be operating in that, that level. Can I get an amen for anybody that believed that? All right? So you sitting here before we talk and you say, I'm going to have a million in my account. You better not have a million in your account if it's just FDIC insured for 250 Unless it's a special account that insures more than the 250 When you get to the 250 it's filled. God is saying to the tithers, when you honor me, I'm going to fill some things for you. Your barns shall be filled. Hey, your account's going to be filled. It's going to reach that limit where you're going to say, I can't put no more money in that account. I got to open me. Hey, God have mercy. <laughs> this is what Solomon is saying. He said, honor the Lord with thy substance. And he says, listen, I'm telling you, this is his word. It's his word. He says, so shall thy barns, that's, that's a tongue twister, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst forth with new wine. Now, the scripture on the presses, listen, Lafayette, I don't think you're quite ready for the fullness of this scripture right here. All right? So I'm just going to deal with it on a tertiary basis. We talked about it a little bit in Atlanta, but, you know, I don't think that you're ready for that, that like that. He says, so shall thy presses, thy vats, burst forth with new wine. All right? We're going to talk about that at a later time a little bit. But what you need to know about this particular scripture is this. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, they used to drink wine in the Bible. But let me just let me just let me just keep moving. Let me just keep moving. I should, but you know we gotta we gotta. Not everybody ready for everything. Some of y'all gonna go back to the club. But listen, listen. Come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Come on, you gotta preach for y'all. Listen, let's not digress. The 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 presses shall burst forth with new wine. God said, when you honor me and you're tired. The things that's under your watch, your businesses, and in this particular case, it was a, it was a vineyard. It was a vineyard where they would, they would press grapes, and they must have sold wine in this particular situation. Well, whatever it was, because they was tied then, that wine vat, that press, that business began to overflow. God is saying that, listen, when you are tired, I'm just not going to bless you, but I'm going to bless every business that you are part of. It's going to overflow. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what the scripture means. It means super abundance. You know, I don't know who you are uh, this morning. Amen. But handling money God's way is really the only way. When we come back, we're going to talk about generosity to the poor. We're going to talk about finding yourself a cause. 
We're going to talk about looking out in the public and seeing where people need you the most. Because it's not just the tithe, no. It's about being generous in every area. And so we're going to talk about that as well. Now, it's my belief. You don't be generous and not give the tithe. You give the tithe and you be generous. It's two separate things. All right? And so that's what you have to do. Amen. And so saints of God, hallelujah, let's have a word of prayer. Amen. And we're going to look at some things on hallelujah the next time I'm here. Most high God, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much, God, for, hallelujah, loving us enough to tell us the truth about ourselves. Father, as we go over your scriptures about how we should handle our finances, we pray that somebody in here, somebody, would grab it and run with it, God. The same way that a man came to the open door church and just broke down money the Bible way. And it changed our lives, God. Let this message change the lives of your people. I pray as we have recapped some things that you would go back and show your people how to get out of the bind that they're in. And Father, we pray when it's all said and done, that your people would once again be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, give him praise up in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me good. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. We're going we to just, we're going to do the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. Then we're going to do tithes and offerings. Amen. And uh, hallelujah. Just know, um, your pastor does not drink. I just want to tell you that. I never drunk anything in 20-something years. Amen. Um, but I just read the Bible as it is. Amen. And uh, I'm going to put that out there like that. Um, secondarily, amen, I need you to understand that if you have overwhelming debt, amen, it is important when you paying out your debt to start off with the smallest loans first and pay the smallest ones first. Some people will tell you pay the highest interest rates, but I'm telling you, that makes sense financially but that will not give you the inspiration logically. When you begin to pay off the small ones first, something happens called the snowball effect, and you begin to get excited about paying off debt. And so go through your budgets, go through your finances, and find the $100, $200, find the $300, find the $500, find the $1,000, and just keep paying all of those off. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna notice that you will be accumulating some monthly money back into your income. This is the way that you pay off debt, my friends. All right? All right? And so listen, we're going we to get going. Hallelujah with the Lord's Supper. Listen, do we have any questions or comments on, on finances? I know we talked about some other things last time when we opened it up. But about finances, about finance, anything about finances. And, and if you ask something that's not about finance, I'm just not going to answer you. But... <laughs> But anything, I'm playing, y'all, I'm playing. Anything about finances. Anything about finances. And help me out, help me out. Uh, um, um, do we have anybody? Holly, what you got, sister? About finances, about finances. You say, what would be good? Debt stacking. Wow, I, I, I don't know what debt stacking is. That must be something new. Now, I, I heard of a term, Quincy, called debt consolidation, where they kind of consolidate and you actually get a loan to pay off a bunch of debt. Is that what you're talking about? Not exactly. No, I used to work for an insurance company. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Okay, you put a, you put, you put a jazzy term on it, debt stacking. Let me tell you, I love it. I love it. I think that is great. And so what, 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 what the young lady was saying is, 
you pay off that first loan, but you use those payments that you was paying on that first loan into your second loan, and, and you just, and, and, and I love it, because that's how you need to go crazy paying off your debt, all right? You got to go crazy with it, because you have money sitting on the table that you could be enjoying a whole lot more if you get them people off your bank, all right? I promise you, I promise you. All right, anybody else before we go into the Lord's Supper? Great comment, that was awesome. I learned debt stacking. All right. And while they were talking about that consolidation, she didn't bring it up, but I brought it up. So I'm going to just talk about it. Consolidation is good. If you got these principles, but don't consolidate your loans if your mind not renewed. Because I've seen people consolidate loan, lower their payment to go just get a. <laughs> You just dig yourself into a deeper hole. So consolidation is not always the answer unless you knew on the inside. If you knew on the inside, then I would say go ahead and consolidate. If not, you just, yeah, you just. Same thing with bankruptcy, yeah, yo. If your mind not renewed, you're going to be bankrupt in every seven years. You got to change your mind. You got to change your mind. Anybody else before we go? Q, good to have you in the house, baby. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, we just going in it, man. And if y'all got something, y'all go ahead and say something. If I don't know, I'm going to ask Kevin Flugin back there. He got a lot of money. I'm going to ask him. Anybody else? Anybody? Go ahead, Chesterfield. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let the eclipse pass. Okay, let it go next week. All right, all right. Good news about interest rates is while the election is going on, interest rates are going to continue to drop. The moment they get who they want in office, it's all going to change again. They just, they just manipulating the interest rates, Sabrina, so that we could vote for who they want to vote for. All right? Because as soon as we saw the election coming, that's when they start trying to give us news that the economy is recovering. That's all games, man. I don't like all them people over there. I, I just don't like all them people, boo. That's all games. They playing games with those numbers, and that's what our money they playing games with. You know, you, 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 you're paying one payment, then they jack the interest rate up, now you're paying a whole nother payment. It's only a few things you don't play with. You don't play with people's spouse, you don't play with their food, and you don't play with their money, baby. You saw Ronaldo, and I said, okay, all right. How you do that, Ronaldo? Oh, all right, baby, yeah, baby. Period. They playing with our money. Anybody else? So, so, so interest rates, so wait till they go down. They gonna go down. They gonna go down. They gonna continue to go down. Barring any, any, any unforeseen events, Tiger, they gonna, they gonna keep on going down. And you wait for them. I, I've heard people say it's not even really a good idea to buy a house right now because and it's hard to tell people, especially in the business I'm in, I'm into real estate. It's hard to tell people to wait. You don't want to wait to buy no house. But if you knew your money, you would. Because you can get more house for less payment. You know, anybody else? And then we're going to go. Hallelujah. They're giving already. They're giving already. Who we got back there? Hey, Miss Parisha, what's going on? I, good, good email. Did your daddy, we, we settled that? All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. I, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. I'm going to say it like this. It, it depends what it's for. That's what it depends for. You know, I think that home equity is great if you're going to use it to make some money. If you're going to use it to make some money, baby, make some money. 
Because what it is, is you taking out of what you done put in. That's your money. And you're using it to, to build. I done did that before. That's why I'm not going to judge you. Now, if you're going to use it to go shopping, to go do some nails and some hat, and you do it, no, leave that alone. <laughs> Pay that off. But if it's, if it's to invest in a business, that is going to make, because that same business, by faith, can pay that loan off altogether. I promise you. I promise you. So, so that's, I, I, I love a line of credit. And then the interest be, it, it be small most of the time. Most of the time, you know? Yeah, not right now. So, yeah, my line is giving me, my line is, whoo, Lord have mercy. But anyway, anybody else before we go? What's going on, my brother? What's up, neighbor? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Who would be my recommendation for financial advice? You know, um, that varies. All right. For 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 budgeting. All right. Since first lady not in the game, because at PCA, they say anytime they went to first lady, they left with a budget. It didn't matter what what they went there for. Remember that decimal? Yeah, she would give a budget to anybody, amen. You listening, baby? All right. So, so if it's budgeting, I would find somebody that's um, familiar with the Dave Ramsey st strategies. Um, Sabrina, you in the house? You in, you in Braylon? Sabrina in the house. Miss Karen, where Miss Karen at? Miss Karen and Vinny, they in the house, amen. Some of our uh, uh, old school members that took the class with us, amen. So for budgeting, somebody like them, and we're gonna put it on um, the calendar so y'all can help us teach the class, amen, those that's willing. For investments, you know, I would say like Minister Phil, I would say like, uh, like me. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say like, uh, like, like Trey from Dallas, young man in Forbes magazine, like young, just, you know. Because there's a lot you could do with it, you know. And you're making that paper, so, you know, you could. You could be set for life if you know what to do with it. You know that, all right? Anybody else before we go? Anybody else before we go? What you got, Papi? Yes, Yeah, credit report, papi. And they, listen, they got an app for that. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to hook you up, papi. Who work at the bank? Anybody work at the bank over there? I don't know. Who is that? Alicia, have your mind. Help him get his credit report. We got everything we need in house, papi. All right? You get that credit report and start going down that thing and marking that thing off. And boy, you're going to realize that you're richer than you thought. All right, y'all, we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Lord, bless us as we continue this, 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 this seminar on finances. We thank you for it. Now, we're going to remember you in the Lord's Supper. We're going to remember you in uh, the altar call. Bless us with it. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, give God some glory. Hallelujah. Ushers, ushers, come bring the baskets, amen, so that we can do the altar call after that, then the Lord's Supper, and then we're going to get out of here. Amen. If you got any questions, text them if you're online uh, to the church, and maybe we'll be able to answer some after the service. Hallelujah. First Lady sends her love to y'all. Hallelujah. And she's going to be seeing y'all real soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank to God, it is, it is tithes and offering time. Amen. And uh, hallelujah. We all know what we got to do. I'm going to get out your way. There's plenty of ways to give. Baskets, boxes, church app, simple give. Hallelujah. I love it. They coming already. Get out of the way, Pastor. Hallelujah. It's offering time in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 I see you, Imani. Thank you, Lord. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Bless y'all.
Bless y'all. Lacey Broussard, I see you. They giving, they giving. They giving, y'all. They giving. Naomi Trajo, Amisha Romar, I see you. Thank you, Mr. Hundredfold blessing. Stretch forward with your hands, y'all, as they continue to give. Hallelujah. Most high God, I thank you for this blessing of a time that we had today. We pray in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach that you would add a hundredfold, thousandfold, millionfold blessing to your people, God. That as things are switching up in the heavens, switch them up on earth. We pray for a redistribution and that as you redistribute, that we would have enough knowledge and wisdom of your scriptures to now know how to handle your blessings. We pray, God, that you'd make us tithers, you'd make us offerers, and that we would manage your blessings to the best of our ability. Now use it for your glory to get your gospel out and to save souls and open up a window of heaven over your people that they won't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If we talked about some things, hallelujah, that, that bless you, hallelujah, and uh, you feel that you, you can come on, get it. You feel that, that you need some altar time, amen. We're going to do the altar call, hallelujah. And uh, one of the most important things uh, about our God is, hallelujah, more important than, than money, more important than and blessing us financially is the blessing that he gave us spiritually. And that's the cross of Calvary. It'll always be the most important thing at this house. Even, even after all y'all become blessed and, and wealthy, amen, we're never going to forget who made it all possible. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And so we told you at the very beginning that some things was happening in the heavens and you needed to make sure you were saved. And so here's the opportunity right now. You're going to come to this altar. We're going to pray and God's going to save you. It's simple just like that. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, which we all are. Believe that he died on that cross, he was buried in a grave, that he rose on the third day with all your heart. Just believe that. Believe that. Accept that for, for what it is. And then you open your mouth and you call. And the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want to make your calling and election sure, this altar call is going to be, going to be open. You can come and pray with me and be saved. If you need the altar for some other reason, Maybe you know things about to get serious out there, but you just want to make sure you're right with God. You want to renew, recommit some things. The altar is open for you as well. If financially you're ready to turn a new leaf and you need a breakthrough blessing, the altar is open. Come, come, come in the name of Jesus. Come, come in the name of Jesus. Come, come, come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Hallelujah. Teach me your principles, and I will do good. I will remember your house and remember your people. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You know, see, when somebody said that just now, they meant it. When somebody said that, they meant it. I remember your house, remember your people. Somebody meant that, Pete. Somebody meant that. And somebody going to make that promise good. Somebody in this, in this house right here, somebody going to make it good. You meant it, and he meant it. 
<laughs> right now we're going to do the Lord's Supper if you have it with you. The Bible say on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it. He gave thanks. He told his disciples, he said, eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, Jesus says, in remembrance of me. Today we remember him and his passion on the cross, and we thank him for his love for us in Jesus' name. After supper, in the same manner, he took the cup. He looked at it, and he told his disciples, he said, this is the new covenant, the new testament, the new agreement between man and God. Jesus says, in my blood. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. So his blood did it. And he says, drink this, all of you, in remembrance of me. So today we drink the fruit of the vine in remembrance of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Saints of God, I'm not going to delay you. We done had church up in here today. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom peace. Peace in your body, peace in your mind, peace in your family, peace in your finances. Bless you with peace in Jesus' mighty, wonderful, glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. Can't complain. Right, can't complain. Hey, first lady. Hey, first lady. All right, all right. All right. Yes. Man, you talked a lot about a lot of things today, man. Well, we just had fun today. Man, I love that the current events. Well, yeah. yeah. Man, and all that in the world. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man, that was a, a full balance, whole yes. balance meal right there. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. So we had we had a good time, man. And I'm. I'm just stopping by. The Lord told me to just come sit down. Yeah. And so I'm just sitting down. I don't know what we're going right. to talk about. Right. And so let's just see what we, whatever all right. we all want to talk family. about. If y'all got anything, any questions, y'all want to yes. drop on there, man. Look, go ahead and put it in the chat right now while we got past a little more up here mm -hmm. right now, man. Um, but, uh, man, <laughs> thank you for bringing up about that, that, that eclipse. And a lot of folks been talking eclipse. about that. Yeah. And uh, so that's good that, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it's a real thing. If the yeah. Bible in Genesis says it's going to be a sign, a omen, a signal that God is about to switch some things. Then we gotta pay attention, huh? Israel, Israel shaking his head like we do have to pay attention yes. because all of those the, the heavens they spoke. Yeah. Day unto day utter a speech, night after night, it give it knowledge. But they done trained us not to read the heavens no more. Yeah. You know yes. what I'm saying? And so we gotta get back to that. So that eclipse is gonna mean something. I'm not going to get into what it means because I don't know the heart of God. Right. But I think we should just be watching and praying and getting ready for something that's going to switch, that's going to work out for our good. Yes, and I, I, I don't think it's any coincidence yeah. that, we, that you are teaching what you are teaching now. It's not a coincidence. Don't make me get your high five up in here. Don't make me, don't make me, oh, in the name of yes. Jesus. I, I really don't think it's a coincidence. You getting us ready. Yes. That's the, I, the scripture I, I tell myself every day, the wealth, 
of the wicked, wicked. is stored up for the righteous. Yes. I tell myself that often. And I just was on my bed dreaming, and I saw Jason Tatum. I was going to ask you about the dream again. Still yeah, a professional yeah. athlete, but like, Pastor Omar, what do I do with it? How many of our people with record deals, with entertainment contracts, with, with, with athletic, you know, big salaries and signing bonuses, like, what do I do with it? Where do I put this? What yes. vehicle do I, do I use so I can have not only just a lifetime of wealth, but a legacy of yes. wealth yes. for my children and my children's children? And that's what I believe that we need to be on as a people. Our legacy wealth. Yes. Legacy wealth. Amen. Yeah, that was good, especially when you said, man, so that the, 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 that NBA salary could continue. Even, Even when you're after. not in the NBA no more. It's easy. Oh, that was yeah. like, see, yeah. see, back in the day, we, uh, we had a good, a good Gentile friend. And uh, he would talk about real estate. And that's why we had fell in love with real estate so much. He would tell us that he had 100 houses. And with 100 houses, he could, he could fund himself. He could retire. If you, if you just think about it, if you got 100 houses and you charge an average of I don't know, a thousand? Yeah. You know, a right. thousand. You know, a, a month, that's two zeros. Man, what, what is that, Sabrina? That's a hundred thousand? A month? Yeah. With a hundred houses. So one of the portfolio plans I put together for Jason T <laughs> was that he would invest in a thousand houses. A thousand houses. And not just low income, but houses that would average $2,000 a month. So he'd be getting roughly about two million a month you understand what I'm saying? Which yeah. is close to his, you know, 30 million, that 30.4 million salary right. that he's getting now. Yeah. And then, and then, and then start him a little real estate business mm. where he got people that's administrative running that. He ain't got to do that. Yeah. Right. He just signs some things, and if he if he fancy Miss Karen, get him a stamp, stamp his name, Tatum. Tatum. Yes. Tatum. And it's just it's passive income. Passive income. It's just passive income. Yes. So, a question I have from that. So what would you tell like the average person who's not an NBA star making that kind of money? Because that doesn't look attainable to us. Yeah. To be able to, you know, do that and get move around in those spaces. What would you tell the average person? Wow. Uh, uh, two things. Two things. Start educating yourself like you had the money. Begin to walk by faith and not by Begin to get in those circles and understand. While we were in uh, uh, Baton Rouge, we didn't have too much in our refrigerator. Yeah. Basic necessities. Right. But me and First Lady would always go to the real estate auctions. Wow. And we saw these people buying houses for sometimes 10, sometimes 30, and they went up to 100. And we never had the money to do it. We'd come in there, we had an extra thousand dollars hoping something would fall through the cracks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And nothing really ever did. And we were like, God, what were you doing in that time? I was educating you. Yeah. I was educating you. Yeah. We forget that there's a season of preparation and a season of execution. We just want to be in the season of execution. Yeah. That's good. And a lot of the times we think it's execution time when it's preparation time. And in reality, the preparation season is more important than the execution season. Because it's in the preparation you learn how to execute. And right. keep it. And keep it. And keep it. Yeah. So I would say first, preparation. Get yourself in those spaces. Go to those auctions. Begin to act like you have it. Okay. Now don't, don't bid on nothing, but just, no, just sit in the car, yeah. just in the car. Sit, down. <laughs> sit down. Sit down and watch. Sit down and learn. Yeah. Get involved in the tax sales. Educate yourself. And then save. Yeah. Cut the debt and save. Yeah. Some of the stories that I want to bring um, in some of the sermons are of everyday ordinary people who made, who made saving a commitment mm -hmm. as janitors, as cooks, and ended up millionaires at the end of their life. Wow. Just knowing how to say no to the present pleasures right. and saving putting it into compounding interest vehicles and end up a millionaire. It's not that, you, it's not that most of us, not all of us going to make a million, especially Bryce back there. Bryce doesn't already <laughs> mean All of us going to make a million in our lifetime, Deacon Vinny. 
but as we making it, we keep spending it. It's to make it and learn how to accumulate it some kind. You know? So by the end of our 20, 30 years of life, if we multiply your salary time, how many ever years you work, you will have made that million dollars. Yeah. Million dollars, yeah. 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 I remember with the Dave Ramsey, how I would tell us, you know, that, that the money will catch wings, so you have to tell it where to go. You better. Oh, yeah. Or it's going to tell you where to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you better, man. Good. Good. But I'm loving this series, and I, I feel in the spirit that we can't do it for long and forever. I'm, I'm going to have to move on, but I am just enjoying this series with the people of God. And we are, too, because we're learning yes. so much. God. Yes. And I think it's, it's working, because yeah. it's renewing our mind. It's something it may take it. It may take several Sundays to renew the mind. I mean, look, I love the program. It's been all our life with that mindset, so it may take a little while. But it's good because it doesn't even seem like, you know, you did several series on it, right? Yeah. Several Sundays talking about it, but it didn't seem that long, though. Yeah. Well, we've been and it's still so much, you still We've been doing this in January out there. Right. But it don't, it really does not feel like that. It don't feel it like it, does it, not. No. It's so, more and more revelation. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Ashley Harrington has a question online. Um, she's from Atlanta. She asked, uh, should mortgage be considered as something you pay off quickly? regards to your debt and after after other debt is paid off or should you keep the debt or should you keep that debt to leverage wow you know i'm of the opinion that that every debt should be paid off and one of the good reasons to pay off mortgage aggressively is because at a certain point like one of the people had had said you could get a home equity and be able to borrow from yourself, so to speak, to launch different businesses and different things. Now, when you, when you get a, a equity, don't do it facetiously. Don't do it on a get rich quick scheme. Do it when you're prepared because there's so much at stake. Right. You don't wanna lose your house. You don't wanna, right. and even if you start a business with a, with a home equity, don't quit your day job. <laughs> you know, they say you shouldn't eat off your business at least for a year, you know, um, and that way it can become a million dollar business, you know. Like folk, we eat off our business as soon as we start our business. And that'd be synonymous to planting a baby tree and starting to pick from it all as soon as it's planted. It is not strong enough to support itself, let alone support you. And so uh, business goes through a season of maturation that it needs to be left alone. And so, yeah, long story short, even mortgage needs to be paid off. Okay. It needs to be, especially in the good times. Because in the bad times, a mortgage can get you through some years of lack. Uh, yeah, a loan, a, a, a equity loan. Right, yeah. right. So, you know. Hey, man, that's, good. that's great, that's great. <laughs> um, so Robin Jones said education, preparation, and execution. execution. Ooh. I like yeah. that. I like that. Yeah. Holy yeah. Ghost. Yes. Holy Ghost. Wow. So, Malvo, you be investing too, though, Malvo. You be Man, doing I'm your thing. Bit, he he, he want to just have me, ask me the questions. Oh, goodness. So, what kind of stuff you into, Malvo? What Man. kind of investments you into? Well, we're doing little things with the cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Um, I did some training with uh, Brother Trey. With the, uh, with the Man, don't you learning. love Trey? Hey, Trey is a blessing. Man, that, that, hey, that, that, that brother is a... Trey, if you're watching, I'm, I'm trying man. to get you to teach something for Passover. My wife's been on me to reach out to you, but yeah. I'm not that good on the phone. So, um, <laughs> are you in Louisiana or not? He is. Oh, he's in Louisiana. Oh, man, if you talk to him, oh, tell yeah. him I want to holler at him. All right, look. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to get him to teach a class. Yeah. And even, even his brother, man, uh, on the oils, the essential oils, we might have to get uh, 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 Jose. His name, oh, wait. his name left me. Ah. His name left me. What feel that? No, no, it's uh, uh, another guy from New Orleans. I, he, I have his phone number. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. So, what crypto is hot right now? Man, y'all need to be looking at Bitcoin because they got the halving that's coming up right now. The what? And it's it's the, the Bitcoin halving. Okay. All right. It happens every four years. It okay. has several cycles. All right. Or now we're on the soccer right now, which is very interesting because now you got the whole eclipse thing. Now that I think about it, I don't know how to even put that together with that. But it goes through different cycles, and every time it has the halving cycle, Bitcoin usually shoots up. God, 
What right. is it now, Malvo? Well, right now, I just saw, I think it's at 70,000 now. 70,000. Oh, yeah. if, if I would have listened to this man. Yes, in New Orleans. We say New that all Orleans, the time. When he preached <laughs> yes. the conference in, in New yes, Orleans. in New Orleans. Bitcoin was probably yes. maybe what? I don't know if it was in a thousand yet. It might, it might have been a said, thousand or seven thousand. Phil said it was nine hundred dollars. When I when I when I told the people to get into big And when I say like like it was over my head back then, it was way over my head. I thought that was crypto. What what is what is that 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 I don't you know? But it was so prophetic though. Well, we're gonna be listening. So Hallelujah. We give him the glory. We're gonna be listening for the next. Big thing, me oh, and you. listening this time. <laughs> <laughs> so we can put some money yeah, in town, man. We listening this time, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was, that, was, that was just, what, that was 20, wait, 26, that was what, like 2017, 18 when we yeah. did it. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. In New Orleans. Wow. Yes. Hallelujah. $900 and now is $70,000. 70000 Yeah. And, that's, and that is, that's not it. We're not, it's not done. That That's something that'll get you through it's a year done. of famine, too, if you got, if you got yes. Bitcoin that you could just... Yes. Now, when you said last time you talked about the um, that interest, putting things that that attain interest, so when yeah. you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's a couple of coins that that will kind of do that same thing, right? Yeah. Um, I would suggest people get a Coinbase account. Just go to Coinbase.com and get the app. Sign up on that. A whole bunch of coins that you can get there. But one of them, um, uh, Polka Dot. Okay. That's the name of it. Talk but to it, me now. It's nine percent. <laughs> it's nine point four percent. What? I know. Where my phone is? <laughs> <laughs> Golly! You know what I'm saying? You know that's good? No, that's extremely good. I think 6% be a blessing, you know right, what I'm saying? 9%? Right. Now they got some other ones. But that's the main one, you know. Wow. That's, that's, that's the main one. There's some other ones that have even more. I'm just a little leery on the ones that's even more than that because I don't know how safe it is, just to be honest. Because you, you, know, you don't want it to be too good to be. You know what I'm saying? So, but nine was, I was like, ooh. Then I did the numbers. I was like, just, okay. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. going to check it out. Yeah. I, I, I follow him and feel them, you know, doing their <laughs> thing, you know, check them out. Hallelujah. What else she into right now? Man, um, what else, man? Uh, right now, I'm just waiting on that Bitcoin thing right now. I'm okay. Honest, that, that, but you're doing Bitcoin some voiceover happened. work, too. I am doing some voiceover. You're casting your yes, bread on yes, many yes. walls. I am, I am casting many breads and trying to get different streams. Hustling. And, uh, <laughs> we trying, we trying, and I'm enjoying it, man. I feel like it's it's something that uh I didn't know was a passion. I'm, and I'm interviewing him. Man. The DC, yeah. <laughs> Michelin, the Michelin, are you still baking or what? What you doing? Oh wow. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, John. Y'all know Michelin yes. got a gift from the yes. Most High. And what, what what's your name of your business again, Michelin? Tell us all. It was Ava Cakes. Ava, Ava Cakes. Ava Cakes. All right, multiple streams of income. Yeah, we try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, John, John hustling, man. I call John, John like, man, John had his, his, his job at the day. John got a job at night. Oh, and not no hustling, more. man. He, he, he not, not at night no more. He not at night no more. Well, well, if you consider helping me. <laughs> oh, he's helping that would, you? Yes, he's Okay, he, okay. Yes. Well, that's good. He's a great help. Yeah, yes. look, I know John gonna be doing something. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not gonna take too much more of y'all time. I know that maybe Sabrina and Miss Karen might be coming up. Yes. Amen. Yes. And uh, they're gonna be able to shed some light on some things. I'm hoping I can get them to teach one of those classes, Miss Karen, just to help out the church and stuff like that. We're gonna have to figure out a way because we're in a season again yeah. where the people of God gonna need those uh, tools again. Coming back to the it's base. Like our mind is ready as a community. Like our consciousness is, we understand it now. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's got to be God doing that. A lot of money will not solve our problem if we don't. If you don't know, you don't yes. have the knowledge. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And the way we grew up, man, it got, that got to be renewed. It got to get. Yeah. Now imagine us running while they drop a million dollars. Oh. It's gonna be raining for it's sure. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be raining for sure. Yes. Let me let y'all go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, Thank I love y'all. I mean, love y'all. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Shalom, Israel. Yes. Amen. <laughs> all right, all right. Some Live stuff, stream, man. Thank y'all so much for stuff. chilling with us, man, and, and talking with us on the Reflections post show. Man, that was Pastor Omar, Omar dropping some more information, and uh, it's, it's, it's our season, y'all. It is our season. Yes.
and it's, it's, it's right on time. It is right on time. So the Lord wants us to be blessed, man. That is, that's yeah. the Lord's heart for us to be blessed. For real. Yeah. What's going on, Miss Supreme? Hey, hey. How y'all doing? What's up, Miss Karen? Let me see. I think it's on. Let me see. You no, got a green light? Got y'all off. Let's see. There we go. Yep. We're good. Oh, oh, this one not on. Wait a minute. Oh, no, we might not have no batteries on this one. Oh, <laughs> there, there we go. go. Right, it is. You got it. All right. All right. Yes. All right, y'all. So what y'all got? How y'all doing? Well, first, let me introduce who they are. Okay. My name is Karen <laughs> Dugas. I'm Sabrina Cormier. Yes. And what y'all do? Well, we do, I do a lot of things. All right. <laughs> do. She does. Um, Great things. So I'm, I'm an educator. Um, mm -hmm. And I love this series. Uh, one of the things I do call myself is a financial educator. Um, my niche is teaching financial literacy to teens. Yeah. Um, and I also do financial coaching for adults. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And um, I am a realtor, and I also have a sign business, but I also have 11 years of banking, and my background, my degree is finance. Wow, wow. Amen. this has really been exciting. Yes, 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 yes. So what are some things that, that y'all um, got from the message and also like how is what you guys do already as a profession, how does that even, you know, expand even been able to share that with other people too? Yeah. yeah. So um, I love Pastor's points about budgeting, of course. Um, I think it's so important for us to manage our finances as well. Mm -hmm. And I heard someone say, um, every dollar has a purpose. And if we treat our money in that regard, um, and like Pastor said, tell your money where to go. Mm -hmm. um, and also ask God where our money should go. But make a plan, a budget is just a plan. And a lot of times we feel bound by it, but plans do change over time. And um, we help a lot of families set up the budget, but it's maintaining that budget. It should be revisited weekly because right. you have to update it, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a lot you have to account for. And um, God rewards the manager. If you are faithful in your finances, if you are a good manager, the Bible says be faithful in little, and then you'll be faithful with much more. Yes. And so no matter how much we have, it really doesn't matter. It's about can you manage what you have? And as God finds you faithful in that, he'll increase it yeah. over yeah. time. That's good. That's, That's good. good. That is good. So for me, I've really been enjoying this. Um, when, we, when I first came to Philly, it was 2011. I don't think we were ever talking about finances back then. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. It's no. a different yeah. level. Yeah. Um, and over the years, I would have this conversation with multiple believers, and I would find either they're way on the left side, like super spiritual about it, like, don't worry about it, God's just going to provide, and like, yeah. no wisdom, no budget. And yeah. I'm like, oh, this is like a strange subject. I'm not going to talk about it. Are they completely on the other end and just um, extreme in the church? money hungry, you know, like church, you know, preaching just money. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Philly has a good balance. Mm -hmm. I feel like what pastor is saying is like, it's, it's so good. It's like golden, you know, yeah. the time we're in, we're getting our finances in order. Things are happening. Like we want to be prepared. Um, whenever we do get blessed, we don't want to lose it. Right. You know, we want to be able to sustain. If we do have another pandemic, if things shut down Jesus. or they take away the cash, don't you know, we, right. just say another pandemic. You you know we just we want to oh, be God. prepared. We don't know. That's we want to be prepared. That's we don't want to be, you know, just lost and just living simple. Right. And um, also for me, it's I'm passionate about it because I didn't grow up having these conversations with my family. Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Like, I think it was like they really wanted me to do well mm -hmm. and be blessed, mm -hmm. but they didn't know what to tell me. That's you so know, the truth. They and really and they didn't do they know. want us to be yeah. better and, and do good, but sometimes they, they don't know what to tell us they to actually like, get it yeah. and get it done. Yeah. Just want to, but but yo, you better do good though. Right. Do good. Right. Yeah, Go but, get your education and do good. But how? how? Yeah. yeah, man. And I've seen my parents struggle. I've seen my parents, like you say, talk about payday loans and refinance them more and keep redoing it or you know, pay Sears for 20 years. You Come know, on, just things yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to live like that either. You know, so 
And then I found myself being, um, honestly, jealous of the wicked, even though the Bible tells us not to, because I'm like, well, why do they have, what are they doing so different? What do they know that I don't know? Yeah. So this is just so good that yeah. it's happening in church, and it's just a good balance. Yeah. I love it. Amen. Amen. That reminds me of, yes. uh, David felt like that, man. Like, look at it. How they doing all this? And yeah. man, I'm your servant. I love you, Lord. But why? I need better than me, blessed than me right now. But yeah. no. Yep. There's a way for us, too, though. Yeah. There is a way for us. And I like that, Ms. Karen, what you said about the, the whole budgeting thing and enduring. And the word that came to me was like consistency. So how much do you think consistency is important in everything? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, Vinny and I, uh, Deacon Vinny, is my husband and when we first got married we could not talk about money. we're very like chill yeah <laughs> but in our home when we talked about money we we did not have the same financial uh imprint why is yeah. it so hard to talk about money i'm it, telling it, it y'all well, you know why we had this conversation yeah. yesterday yeah. and i was i was just telling her like look i I feel like I'm, I'm I'm going back to when I was when, the way I grew up. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And well, a lot of the way we grew up tends to come out. If you come yeah. out, and you don't even want to talk about well, money. We should be able to talk about it because we got to use it. That's here's true. what and I, I learned. Here's what I learned that all of us have a different financial imprint. Yep. Yeah. The way you were raised, mm -hmm. or what you what you witnessed, your parents, Witness, yes, how they yes. handled money, left an imprint on you whether to do the same or do the complete opposite. Yes. That's good. Right. You know, your wife, mm -hmm. she has a different imprint. Mm -hmm. And so Vinny, you know, when I met Vinny, he was debt free. I didn't even know the blessing Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> But at the same time, he didn't have like a checking account. Yeah. There was a lot of things like, how are you living in, you know, this day and age without those things? And I, I had a mortgage, I had mm -hmm. debt, you know what I mean? And so he had a, it was like, no, no, him, it was no for everything um, to where we didn't enjoy the pleasures of life wow. either. You know, it was just like this bond. And then I was like free, too free. So we had to balance it out. Yeah. But it took years uh -huh. before we can become consistent. Yeah. We look at our, we do our budget every month, every Sunday. Vinny and I sit down and we we balance the budget, wow. and we we plan our week and we talk about because guess what? He's spending money. I'm spending money. We need to be on the same page. Yes. Yes. The money account we see the. The, the bank accounts dwindling, yeah. but do we know where all the money where is going? going? What do now, you have coming up? Now, how do you make it comfortable to come to sit down mm. and to have those mm. kind of conversations? That's when that good. person, they may have different imprints and they, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. just saying, just, yes. just to even sit down because I'm telling y'all, we, you know, meanwhile, we've been married when we on 14 years, praise yeah, God, man. you know what I'm saying? And it was very hard at the beginning, but it still had those, those moments. And I'm, I'm just talking just for me, yes. right. Like, right, right. why is it me not wanting to come just to sit yeah. at the table? Like, we could talk about anything else. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Ah, right. I could talk, we could talk, but when it's time to talk about money, don't wanna do it. Well, you don't want to do it, but now we yeah. got to be able to, but we should be able to do it because we want more money though, right? Yes. Right. right. But it requires a lot of transparency. Mm -hmm. Amen. It requires a lot of transparency on, on both spouses' parts. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a come to the table knowing it's okay to have friction. Mm -hmm. But you got to stay in the trenches until y'all come to an agreement. Right. Yeah. And it will be ugly a lot of times. Mm -hmm. There will be debate like, well, I think this is important. Well, you know what? I think the money should go here. I think this is more important. But you know what? God is in the center, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can come together and say, you know what? We agree to disagree. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. I promise you he'll send somebody from the outside to come and confirm some things. You know, the Holy Spirit will speak to you about yes, some things. Yes. But it's not, it's gonna be ugly for a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you got, you have to stay in the, I'm telling you. And, and for us, it's the joy of the other side of knowing we're on one accord right, with right. our finances and, and to make plans to do the pleasurable things in life. Mm -hmm. Like right. traveling and yeah. things yeah. that you want to do, like that is for a greater cause, you know. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's good. And that's, that's good. good. Yes. Ooh, glory to God. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I, can I do a plug real quick? Yeah, yes. oh, oh, yes. 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 go do yes. it. Come on. <laughs> so um I have a um last summer I started a, a teen um financial literacy camp for teens. Yes. Ages 14 to 18 years old. So if you're in Lafayette, um, this summer, we're having our second annual financial literacy camp. 
um, July 15th through 19th. And we, it's called uh, Habits of a CEO, uh, Confident, Economical, Original. I believe that if we teach, like what you said, sometimes we didn't learn this until later in life. Yes. But yeah. if we can teach young people Come to pick up this now. habit now, they will be so much further along yes. than what we have been, what yes. we what we are. And so I'm just a, I'm just an advocate for that. Yeah, the yeah. fee is 125. We have right now a, um, a discount, a scholarship that's reduced to 75. That's good. It's worth so. it. It, 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 it. It should be more than that. But I'm just saying. No, I agree. But it's worth it because the, the information and that your kid is going to leave out of there with something that that for most of us probably didn't get. Yeah. I didn't get that. Right. Growing up as teenagers, you know what I'm saying? Yo. So to have that, they go remember that, man. Yeah. And if you don't have a team but you want to give to this so we can scholarship young people, we never want money to be a barrier right. for our children to receive education. We received we receive donations too. So. We love that. So <laughs> so Karen, um, how how do they register? Is there a website that they go to? How do yes. they register? So you can that? go to www.abovethelimit.org. I'll have it up there. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, you can follow Karen Dugas or Beyond the Bus Foundation. It's through my nonprofit. That's what's up. We like love that. That's good. Yeah. 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 I like that title. Yeah, like it's yeah. yeah. that further. <laughs> Man, Spectrum, and I love it, man. Yeah. Praise God. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for Thank having us. Yes. yes. All, right. all right, all right. Wow. Man, a lot of great information today, y'all. This is it's our time. It's our season. I think so. It, it really is. I it believe really is. so. I feel like that was a little counseling session right there. That's what I felt like. <laughs> Stuff I would stuff I need it. Yeah, man. Because I'm it, I'll, I'm the one too. I don't like I, I, I avoid. I know. I avoid. But we gotta we gotta get in that and we get in it because we we want to be blessed with it. We want to have it. Yes. But we gotta be able to talk about what you, what you want to have. Yes. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? Hey. How you doing, man? You all right? Good, good, man. Mm -hmm. Let's see if, if it's on. You got yes. We agree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. No, it went off. It went okay. Off. There we go. All right, there we go. Now you good. Hello. Yes. Okay. That's all it. Right. That's it. What's happening, man? What's going on, big brother? What you got for us today, brother? Well. First of all, I just wanted to say about this whole series about finances. I feel like it's Rhema uh, because in the church, like I was, I grew up in the church as a child, but I always had this mentality that I learned that was towards the lines of being broke or being poor. Right. It's like pious yeah. or being poor is something that keeps you closer to God or something. Yeah, right, right, right. And it wasn't until I came to Philadelphia until I started realizing like God really want us to have things. Yes. We, we his people, we supposed to be blessed. Yes. Come on. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. And that's a whole mindset shift that I feel like generationally is coming to be. And I, I feel like it's part of the whole uh, movement and awakening of the Hebrews. Yes, and yes. I, I see it definitely as something that's spiritually taking place right now. Amen. Amen. And um just over the past couple of years, I you know, like like I say, from being here, I've been this is my fifth year at Philly. Yeah. So yeah. And from from the year I uh found Philadelphia, you know, I'm from Baton Rouge. Right. And um the year I found Philadelphia, we was traveling to come here. Just from 2019 until now, it's like, just like how the sermons pass the preaching, it's like finances, and it's all happened for us spiritually first. Right. Because, and now it's getting talked about on a level to where it's easily digestible for everybody. Yeah. But it happened to me spiritually first because I cried out to God that year, and I had been working <clears throat> many hours for a long time and wasn't seeing no fruits for my labor. Come on. And it was frustrating. Like yeah. I, I was mad. Yeah. And God put, just dropped the word in my spirit. Real estate, <laughs> well, two words. Come on. And, yeah. that, and it was something that I never knew or cared about because right. I didn't know about it. Yeah. And that's just a year from that day. A year from the day when He dropped that word. That was around Thanksgiving in 2019. A year from that day. I was putting in offers on a property in Lafayette. <laughs> yeah. And just from, I just went diligent on just the, those two words he dropped in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And 
started finding out everything that there is to go along with real estate. Right. Like, how do you get it? Uh, how do you afford it? Yeah. What are ways that you can um, help yourself to position yourself to be able to get it? Right. And, you know, like, uh, just everything that hadn't been taught to me. Yes. I started self-educating, going to YouTube University. Okay. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> yep. Google you. Yep. You know. Yes. Yeah. And got a lot of information about that. And, you know, just... And back to back years, I bought two properties. Come on, wow. man! I was yeah. going to ask you, man, because I heard about that. I was going to say, "Come on, definitely." So, what, what you what you got in as far as like in the real estate? What what, what was how did that so, how did it go? Well, for one thing, and I think it's powerful for you know people who don't know about this is is different loan products you could get, which Pastor talked about loans right. and talked about debt. Yeah, and he did make a distinction between. Good debt and bad debt. There is yeah, such a yeah, thing yeah, as yeah, good yeah, debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm using good debt and, um, to, to, to do this. It's like um, my first property I got, I used a, a FHA 203K loan. Yeah. So I'm going to give y'all some game on this. The 203K loan okay. is a loan, just like a lot of people look at an FHA loan as a first time home buyer loan. Mm -hmm. When actually, it's not just a first-time home buyer's loan. It's just a loan product that's offered, that's backed by Fannie Mae, the government. Yeah. And you actually could do that. You could use the FHA loan more than once. You could do it more than once. Okay. You just can't have two at one time, more than one at one time. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you if you look into the stipulations for the FHA loan, they they are good for up to a four-unit property. Okay. So you could get a one, a one. You could get a one unit like a single family home. Right. But you are gonna have to work to pay that loan off. Uh huh. I, okay. I, I think I know where you're going. You can get, going. A, you can get a duplex, oh, and you can live on he? one side. Okay. And you can rent out the other side, and they can help you pay your mortgage <sighs> by having one tenant. They can help you pay your mortgage. Right. Yes. You could get a threeplex, a triplex. Oh. And you can have two tenants, and you can live in one, and have those two tenants paying the rent, and you have a, you could, the money you make on your job or whatever you do, you can save that. Right. Or you could do like I did. I said, I won't go for the gusto. All right, so what did you do? That's what I wanted to get to. What did Clemente, what When you I did? found out about this, I wanted a four. I like, you I want to go for the, for the on, most man. you could do, so I got a four yeah. place. Yeah. I bought it, um, closed on it January 21st. 2021. Yeah. Right. I've been owning it for three years now. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, um, and, it, and, it, and it's worth. I got a thirty-five thousand dollar renovation done on it, and didn't I, it didn't come out of my pocket? My tenants pay for it. Wow, that's the power of the uh, FHA two hundred three K loan. You get a distressed property, something that needs work. Yeah, and the uh, mortgage consists of like your whole your whole um, renovation part of the loan is wrapped into your mortgage. So, yeah, all you do is close. Once you close on it, you own the property. Yes. And, and um, that's when you, you get your contractors to come in and do the renovations and stuff. And that's all wrapped into your loan. Yeah. So right. as long as you keep that property occupied, the mortgage is paying itself out. They got so many ways, so many, so many ways. So just, and, I want to give a tip on I'm glad you did. Well, maybe I maybe, learn maybe he day. needs to teach a class. We're going to have to get yeah. Clement to teach a class. We're going to let Pastor know about that. Because, yes. uh, yeah, we need to know that stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and and not, not everybody knows those things. And that's no. a tool to, to build wealth and provides a place mm -hmm. for the family to stay. And also something that you can leave to your children and, and, and go on to something else. Because that's, that's just the first one. I know yeah. that you, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I know what, you got some more coming plan in The is for the children's children. Come so, on, now. Yeah. Yes. Right. I mean, the, the next year after that, I bought some land. I bought four acres. Um, which, yeah. You're okay. Yeah, this is a different strategy. This is another strategy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. You going to say that for the class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, come in, brother, man. Appreciate you, man, coming up here, man, sharing that, that knowledge yes. with us, man. That's another testament that it's our time, and we could do these things. Mm -hmm. We might, we might be, it may seem foreign or unknown to us, but just we just got to just go out and just do it and just learn. Yes. yes. We know how to learn on the job, right? Right. Yeah. So we need to just go out there and just learn it and, and just do it. Yes. Let's go. And never Let's put go. yourself in a situation where you think you can't do it. It's like, 
if you a believer, you have no businesses, no business thinking you can't. Like your ability is not in your hands, it's in God's hands anyway. Amen. If you got faith in God, then whatever you set your eyes out to be able to do, you have the ability if you do your due diligence Amen. and lead the rest of him. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Come here. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, thank your you. Your blessing to us, man. Thank, thank you for sharing you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Right. Glory to God. Yes. Wow. Powerful, powerful message nuggets, today. Nuggets, nuggets, nuggets. Love all the nuggets, man. That is, I think that's a wrap. Yeah. I, I, I think so. All right. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, saints of God, thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Reflections Post Show. I'm Deacon mm -hmm. James Malvo. And I am Deacon Nishalanda. And it has been a good one. Yes. It, it has, has been, been really a good, good one. Good. Yes. Really good. So until next time, man, we're going to close out in prayer. Father mm -hmm. God, we thank you, Lord God, for the word on this morning. Thank you for the nuggets, the knowledge, the um, the the current events Pastor talked about, things going on in the earth, your signs and in the sky and always have it in with us as a people and the, the awareness that you're giving us financially uh, for us to be blessed God thank you for these nuggets thank you for these truths and may we truly let it uh, grow in us Lord God let us become a tree planted Lord God by, by the rivers Lord God let us uh, grow tall and strong Lord God in your fertile ground bless the rest of our week Cover us with your protection on this week, Lord God. We know not what a day may bring, so we ask that you would have your hedge around us, Lord God. Keep us and protect us, Lord God. Let our week be supremely blessed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Everybody.